San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. 51 degrees now. What is the rest of the weekend going to look like? Sarah Spivey is back. She's going to have your full forecast in just a few moments from now. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Good morning. All right, so last couple days you've been out and about. You've been busy. Yeah, we did the cowboy breakfast mm -hmm. yesterday morning. How was the turnout? It was, you know, it was great. I, it wasn't as big as previous years. I think people are just kind of getting wind of it, but I think it was very, very successful. Food was good. And Sarah, it was really that cowboy breakfast weather. Like it was cold, cold, a little damp. Foggy. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of the theme around rodeo, too. We get those cold fronts, it cools us down. But this weekend's going to be beautiful, guys. We're going to have temperatures in the 60s for the highs. Plenty of sunshine, too. Take a look outside right now. It's a little chilly. It's 50 in Kerrville, 51 in LaGrange, 51 in Del Rio, 50 in Hondo, 52 here in San Antonio. Closer view, 50 in Bernie, 48 Rio Medina, 51 in Bulverde, and 52 in Converse. But today, a big story is going to be the winds. It is going to be a bit breezy. Well, we're having winds right now from the northwest, gusting up to about 20, 25 miles per hour in places in the hill country. But during the day today in San Antonio, we'll see a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. So just a bit of a breeze with that wind from the northwest. It's going to keep temperatures fairly cool. We'll be up to 60 degrees today. That's about it. Then a cold morning tomorrow, but a pleasant afternoon at 64. All in all, a beautiful weekend to catch up on perhaps some yard work. We've had a lot of rain. We had some freezes mixed in there. So a great weekend to get some things done outdoors if you want to. Coming up, I'll tell you how long this nice dry weather pattern will last and when we can expect rain again in San Antonio. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, an investigation now underway after a man was found shot and killed on WW White Road near Old Corpus Christi Road. So this all unfolded yesterday. It started around 7 p.m. Bear County Sheriff's investigators, they were called out to WW White Road. Two people driving by, they say they saw the man lying right in the middle of the street. Investigators believe the man is in his 20s or 30s. They believe he was shot and killed at the scene. Now, right now, this investigation is still clearly underway, but BCSO asking for your help. Anyone who may have heard gunshots or seen anything at the scene, or has to call the sheriff's office, that number 210-335-6000. Crime Stoppers needs help solving the murder of Tarrant Mitchell. He was shot and killed just over a month ago. San Antonio police say the 20 year old was with a group when he shot by he was shot by someone who drove in a Kia sedan. This happened around 5th, December 15th at the intersection of North Mittman Street and Arthur Street on the city's east side. Several people were shot, including Mitchell, who did not survive. If any information, please call Crime Stoppers at number on your screen 210-224. STOP. Now we cover body camera footage a lot here on KSAT. So now imagine being able to look at footage from an officer's body cam just moments after the incident unfolds. That is exactly what the Live Oak Police Department say their new system can do. They've traded in their bulky cameras for a cell phone. They're holstered inside the officer's uniform. They pat it and then it would start rolling. That video would immediately be uploaded to the cloud. Now, the Live Oak Police Department, they would have immediate access to the footage, and if someone outside the department wants to see the footage, they'd have to obviously file a request. But the police department says this is quicker, and it's an easier way to expedite the getting out of information. We want to be very time sensitive uh, when we are need to answer back to the community and answer back to our elected officials. And so being able to do that in almost real time is extremely valuable. To the Live Oak Police Department, they say the new system saved the city of Live Oak. Get this, about a quarter million dollars already. Out of the courts, a verdict reached in the civil defamation trial against former President Donald Trump. Yesterday, a jury ordering Trump to write or to pay writer E. Jean Carroll more than $80 million for publicly defaming her. Moments after Trump vowing to immediately appeal, here's ABC's Allison Kosick with the details from the verdict and trial. In just under three hours, a jury in New York City reached a verdict in the civil defamation trial against former President Donald Trump. The jury ordering Trump to pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million for defaming her after she went public with her accusation that he sexually assaulted her in a department store dressing room in the 1990s. 
The verdict came after a heated day in court. At one point, Trump getting up and walking out as E. Jean Carroll's attorney was delivering her closing statement. Trump had been shaking his head, silently disagreeing as Carroll's attorney reminded the jury that Trump did not respect the verdict of a prior trial that found he sexually assaulted and defamed Carroll and unleashed vicious attacks against her. In closing arguments Friday, Carroll's lawyers asking the jury, how much will it take to make him stop? They said Trump's defamatory statements triggered a tsunami of attacks, including death threats that are now part of her daily life. Carol had testified she keeps a pit bull at home and a gun by her bed. Trump posting on his social media platform calling the verdict absolutely ridiculous. We will immediately appeal. We will set aside that ridiculous jury. We will keep fighting. And I assure you, we didn't win today, but we will win. In a statement, E. Jean Carroll praised the jury's verdict, saying, This is a great victory for every woman who stands up when she's been knocked down and a huge defeat for every bully who has tried to keep a woman down. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, back here in Texas, Senate leaders striking a deal on immigration. We'll see if it gets passed. Sources reporting to CNN that this deal on the border is part of a larger package that would include more money for Ukraine and Israel. Right now, no specific details on the immigration part of the policy. Sources expect the plan would significantly restrict illegal immigration at our southern border. They say it would also speed up the asylum process to consider cases within six months. Right now, that process can take up to 10 years. More details of the plan could become public by next week. However, House Speaker Mike Johnson has already warned his Senate colleagues that if the details have come out so far are true, the deal is, quote, dead on arrival in the House. Former President Donald Trump has also told Congress not to support the bill. So while that plays out in D.C. Yeah, so while that plays out in D.C., another border battle continues right now between Governor Greg Abbott and President Joe Biden. Shelby Park, it's in Eagle Pass, it's along the Rio Grande and it is the center of the dispute. So earlier this week, the Department of Homeland Security demanded the state surrender Shelby Park by midnight so Border Patrol agents could access it. But the state of Texas has not complied. Border Patrol says it needs to get in since it's the only place with a public boat ramp in Eagle Pass, and it's where many migrants try to cross into the U.S. So the Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxson, sent the federal government a letter saying point blank, blank Texas is not backing down. Now, the state has not let Border Patrol into the park since January 10th. And speaking of the border, the number of migrant crossings along the U.S.-Mexico border reaching a new record high. All of this according to data released just yesterday by Customs and Border Protection. So, the data showing immigration officers have apprehended more than 300,000 migrants in December of 2023. In Texas alone, the data shows there were more than 100,000 migrant apprehensions in that same month time period. An Oklahoma Highway Patrol trooper is describing a terrifying moment last week when an out of control SUV sent him flying. Just take a look at this video. Jesse Gregory was sent airborne during a traffic stop last week when the SUV rammed into the vehicle he had pulled over. After getting hit, Gregory tried to stay calm and phone emergency services. He was taken to the hospital and released that same day, suffering only minor injuries. He's now using the moment to remind drivers what to do when passing a traffic stop. I was able to bounce to my feet and um, call for help. And so being on my feet was very reassuring. I was blessed to be walking. When you see red and blue, please plan ahead and, and, and get over for us so um, we can focus on you know who we're dealing with and we don't have to worry about getting hit. There's that video. You can see it playing on your screen there. Both of the other drivers suffered minor injuries. It's a crazy video, but the important part is that everyone is going to be okay. Right. And I, I mean, every time you see an officer pull over, mm -hmm. slow down right. and, it, and get over if you can. Yeah. Time now, just about 610, 51 degrees. There's been a dramatic jump in car thefts over the last year. So what are you doing to keep your car safe? Still ahead, we'll speak to experts about the steps you need to take to avoid car theft.
And coming up next, the freedom to move. How a little boy in San Antonio suffering from skeletal and muscular conditions will finally be able to move on his own, all thanks to a local high school senior. This is an amazing story. A three-year-old San Antonio boy's life is now a little bit easier, all thanks to a local high school senior. And it really is such an amazing story. I can't get enough of it. John Paul Barajas explains the little boy suffers from a skeletal and muscular condition, making it very difficult for him to get around on his own. But a school assignment and a toy car is giving him freedom to move. It's a red toy car with major and specific modifications. Can you see the casita? Suited specially for three-year-old Yetzael Enriquez Perales. He suffers from nimaline myopathy, which makes it difficult for him to breathe on his own and also leaves him with muscle weakness throughout his entire body. <laughs> Yetzael depends on his mom, Brenda, for almost everything. <laughs> the first year, I would ask God why. Why us? <laughs> but now, I ask for what? Because he has a purpose. <laughs> And now one senior at TMI Episcopal came up with something that can give Yetzel more independence. I designed these components in my computer. Marcelo Martinez Sotamayor used a 3D printer and materials he bought from a store. This is just a, you know, a normal kickboard that you would see in, in a pool. To fit this car to Yetzel's body, even adding room for Yetzel's medical equipment, and then made these joysticks, the gas, brakes, and steering. So yeah, I did have to rewire it, which I would say would probably be like more on the difficult end of this whole project. Marcelo turned a three-month-long school project into endless new memories and opportunities for Yetzel. He's going to have that liberty to be able to move where he wants because he likes to make decisions on his own too, said mom. But she also says the new ride comes with added responsibilities. He can give me a ride. He can take me to the store. Now he can chauffeur me around, she joked. It's safe to say Marcelo passed his assignment. And yet sales mom is grateful, saying... Thank you so much. Keep doing this for more kids, for more people, and continue helping the community of San Antonio. John Paul Barajas, KSET 12 News. So sweet. And it really is. What a beautiful story. Awesome. Thank you, John Paul. Yeah, you know. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was. I was I'm in the UK for about a week and a half. I had to change all of my temperature readings back to Fahrenheit nice. from Celsius. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it was actually colder here than it was in England at one point. So it was a great trip. Happy to be back, though. Absolutely. And we had some of that. UK fog yesterday. Yeah, and a lot of rain, too. I was making a joke of maybe I should leave the country more often so that we can get some more rain here in San Antonio. But yeah, we more on that rain in just a bit, but I do want to get you through uh, the day today. The first thing to keep in mind is that it is going to be pretty windy today. Up until the afternoon, I expect wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour in San Antonio. So a bit of a breeze, maybe a nuisance if you have outdoor plans, but otherwise that is going to be bringing and some cooler air from the north and winds will calm by this mm -hmm. evening. Here's a look at the satellite right now. I want to show you that uh, you can see that we are still seeing quite a bit of cloud cover up across parts of central Texas. So even though we're dealing with clear skies right now in San Antonio, still going to have a few clouds through the first part of the day here. All of this is in the wake of a cold front which moved through overnight. Now this is a very weak front. Again, not like that cold Arctic air we saw about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Uh, but it, with it is this low pressure system creating quite a bit of storms across the Mississippi and it's going to be stormy for the Gulf Coast states today. However, for us in San Antonio, opposite weather, just nice and dry as a high pressure system is going to settle overhead. I know it's been pretty rainy and gray the last couple of weeks in San Antonio, but with this high pressure system settling over in the next few days, we're going to have abundant sunshine and and it's going to be very pleasant with low humidity. So as we take a look at the future cast that high pressure with us most of the week, that means cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. Here's a look at the temperature trend over the next few days in San Antonio. Again, cold mornings in the upper 30s, low 40s, comfortable afternoons in the 60s in San Antonio, plenty of sunshine. 
I know I got to get a lot of yard work done from all of the rain we've seen and that freeze a couple weeks ago, so I'll be taking advantage of this nicer weather. It is cool outside right now, 51 in Bulverde, 49 in Castroville, 50 in Bernie, 50 in Comfort, 50 in Kerrville, 47 in Lost Maples, and 54 in Pleasanton. As we take a look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast, dipping briefly into the 50s here, 40s here in the next couple of hours, then by 10 it'll be 52. Notice that those winds will be sustained from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. A few gusts up to 30 are possible. By noon, it's going to be 54. And in the afternoon, 60 degrees for the high. A cool day for us with winds calming in the evening and temperatures falling. So if you have Saturday night plans, bring that light jacket with you. You will want it. Here's a look at forecast highs today. We'll be a few degrees below the average in San Antonio. It's going to be 60, but it'll be 66 in Del Rio, 68 in Catula, 61 in Canyon Lake, and 60 in Kerrville. 59 in Bernie and 59 in Bulverde, 62 in Rio Medina and 64 at Stinson. As we take a look at the planning forecast again, windy today, very comfortable in the next few days. Uh, and temperatures are going to be climbing into the upper 60s by Wednesday. We start to introduce rain chance by Thursday and Friday, only isolated. But coming up, I'm going to tell you how beneficial this rain has been for our aquifer. You're going to want to stick around and see those numbers coming up in just a bit. It's exciting. It is exciting. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 619, 51 degrees. The numbers are out. The Commerce Department is showing a promising expected growth in the economy. After the break, what people are hoping to gain from this. All right, good morning and welcome back. It has been a big week for the economy. The numbers from the Commerce Department, they show that the U.S. economy it grew in the last quarter, the GDP at least, it grew faster than expected. This strong growth largely driven by consumer spending. The problem is a lot of people have been utilizing buy now, pay later. That hasn't really been factored in. And guess what? People are not really paying later. So the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, they found the number of Americans who expect their financial situation to improve within the year. Get this. It's the highest level that we've seen since June of 2021. Layoffs at Microsoft's gaming division were made yesterday 1,900 employees at Activision, Blizzard, and Xbox losing their jobs. It's about 9% of Microsoft's gaming operation. The cuts come three months after Microsoft acquired Activision Bl Blizzard for $69 billion. And these layoffs of the big tech firms, they've been really problematic to start the year. I think there's been more than 70,000 layoffs already. Wow. Yeah, so we can talk about the high GDP, but also we have to mention people losing their jobs. Yeah. Time now, just about 624, 51 degrees. After the break, a look at a new episode of Texas Eats. What is that? Is that French toast? That's everything. Wow. But yeah, it's French toast. All the carbs, yes. <laughs> So David Elder takes us inside a new brunch spot when we come back. Something that really makes you stand out is the food that's available. And I want to start right here in the front because you got some really cool brunch options. Talk to me about the French toast. My guys in the kitchen came up with a Tres Leches French toast. Oh, look at that. Fresh fruit on top as well. Let's talk about the elephants in the room. These right here, they're huge. You have a mimosa. Now, these are a full bottle uh, of sparkling wine, right? Full bottle of champagne. I mean, you come in here, you can have fun, but I would recommend at least two people with you. This one though is a frozen margarita mix and you would need at least three people with you to order it. Uh, I'll tell you what, just to finish it, you probably need four or five. If you're bringing your adult friends, you can get these crazy drinks. You're bringing the family. There's something here for everyone. And with my previous concepts, El Camino and Besame kind of being known for being colorful. And honestly, it's like kind of like Night at the Roxbury uh, <laughs> influence. It's got a little 90s vibe to it. Challenge accepted. Okay, so I'm glad they specified that you need three, three people, people to order. So yeah. like, those, the size of the glass is so big. Yeah, I, you know what? I think we could conquer one. Oh, definitely. All right. We're going <laughs> to check, check in with one Sarah glass Spivey ETS. in just a few <laughs> moments. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, and you were out and about yesterday. Yeah. Did you get yourself some tacos? Yeah, the Cowboy Breakfast, the official now kickoff. It was off. back. 
It's back and it's officially put on by the San Antonio Stock Show and mm -hmm. Rodeo. It's amazing. And it kicks off all the rodeo events and later or all morning. I know Was it electric? Doing... Was there a big, big crowd? Big crowd. Um, barbecue cook-off kicks off today, all nice. day today. And so, Sarah, are they going to have good weather out there? They are, absolutely. Uh, one thing is it is going to be a little windy, so that would be the only kind of hiccup there. If you're eating off those paper plates and things like that, you might need something to weigh it down just because those winds are going to be slightly stronger. In fact, a great day to be outside and enjoy one of our many state parks. Here's a look at the state park forecast. One thing that stands out to you everywhere you go across south central Texas, those winds. Winds will be sustained from the north, northwest at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Out west, Devils River State Natural Area, 68 degrees. Enchanted Rock, 60 degrees. Government Canyon, 60. Guadalupe River State Natural Area, 60 degrees. Hill Country State Natural Area, 64. And Lost Maples, 64 degrees. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, it is going to be windy today. We'll have gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Throughout the week, though, we are going to have chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. That includes this weekend. So cold in the morning, comfortable in the afternoon. Rain is going to hold off. I know we've had a lot of good rain recently, so maybe we need a few dry days to perhaps do yard work. Only isolated rain this week, mainly during the latter half of the week. But what a week of rainfall for us. The aquifer is up about a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours. But when you look at the last several days, the last 10 days, the aquifer is up 10 feet since January 17th, all because of good rainfall. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the pluses of the decent rainfall we've seen coming up in the next 10 minutes or so. And of course, I'll walk you through the forecast throughout the weekend and into next week. Details coming up. Sarah, thank you. San Antonio police arrested two people accused of several attempted carjackings and breaking into cars in an elementary school parking lot. It happened Friday morning. That's right. It ended with a short chase and then a standoff. This is what we know right now. This is actually from the scene. Police say they first got reports of two attempted carjackings around 6.30 and a second one around 7.45 a.m. Then at around 8.40 a.m., Police say a teacher from Passmore Elementary School saw people matching those suspects' description and those people allegedly burglarizing five vehicles. After that, an undercover detective found a vehicle matching the suspect vehicle description at a shopping center near Military and Highway 90. Police say they chased the suspects to a home on Woodgate, Woodgate Drive, and that's near Marbach Road and Loop 410. The suspects ran inside. Officers negotiated with the suspects for about 30 minutes before they came out and turned themselves over to police. And a 42-year-old man will be spending 65 years in prison for the death of a 36-year-old man from March of last year. San Antonio police say an altercation took place at a Northwest Side bar on March 30th of 2023. At one point, 42-year-old Roach Chisholm pulled out a weapon and shot the victim multiple times. Chisholm initially left the scene. After some time, returned and identified himself as the shooter to officers and surrendered to police. He was sentenced to 65 years in prison yesterday. And another murder from March of 2022, leaving an 18-year-old sentenced to 40 years behind bars. William Rivera, convicted of the murder of Justin Gonzalez. Investigators revealed Rivera shot out the window of a stolen vehicle, hitting the victim, <laughs> shooting and killing the victim. Rivera, who was only 16 when he committed the crime, certified to stand trial as an adult on October 22nd, 2022. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez issuing the following statement in part, quote, William Rivera's reckless behavior claimed a life and caused severe pain. This tragic incident emphasizes the danger when firearms fall into the hands of young individuals, end quote. Oh, this video is so hard to watch. It's heartbreaking. Our viewers agree. A man with a partially amputated leg struggling to get down the stairs with his wheelchair. Wheelchair. This is happening at public housing apartment for seniors and disabled residents. Now, people who live there tell us the man had to do so because the elevator had been broken for several weeks and... Obviously, their frustration is rising. Garrett Berenger headed out to that apartment complex, Kenwood North Apartments, and has a story. Sylvia Nellis was visiting her mother at Kenwood North on Wednesday when they came across this man in the stairwell. I mean, this gentleman has to do this every day until this elevator gets fixed. Something she says has already taken weeks. So we paid a visit to the three-story senior and disabled public housing community near Olmos Park and found... 
Nope. The elevator was indeed not working. And there were plenty of people unhappy about it. I have enough to go groceries. There's no way that I can pull. I need the rails. It's hell. It is very hard. I'm afraid I might lose my cane. I'm going to fall. It's going to be worse for me. And they were eager to prove their point. You want to go to the third floor? <laughs> <laughs> Try it. I can. I guess Try so. It. You know what? I'm, I'm a little out of breath. <laughs> An Opportunity Home San Antonio spokesman said elevator repairs that began in early January got extended because after they got one part, they realized they needed another, too, which they're still waiting on. They keep being, being told that the, part, the part's going to arrive tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, and here we are going on four weeks. The spokesman said affected families were relocated to a hotel but wanted to return, and hotels are still being offered. Nellistel says it wasn't a choice for her mom. She was there, I believe, three to four days, and then they called her and told her that she needed to, be, to come back because the apartment, the part was coming in and the elevator should have been fixed that day. And not everyone wants to go. I have my own needs, my own medication, everything in my home, my apartment. I'm not going to go somewhere where I'm not going to feel comfortable. Before we left, we made sure to make one more call. Let's give it a go. We can't do much for fixing an elevator ourselves, but I figured I'd call and at least place a work order then. Absolutely. Um, what was your name again? Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right. Big question in 2024. How are you keeping your vehicle safe? Over the last year, San Antonio police, they reported a dramatic jump in car thefts. Get this, more than a 50% increase. Across 2023, SAPD says Kias and Hyundais, they were the most common type of vehicle stolen in around San Antonio. So how do you keep your car from being stolen? SAPD recommends taking out all valuables before you park using a club steering wheel lock. Car shops like Mother's Window Tint says investing in a car alarm can stop criminals right in their tracks. If you see something suspicious, you see someone looking into cars and parking lots, call police. We want to make it hard, unattractive to take the vehicle, and alarms do that where the steering wheel locks do not. Look, we know it's an issue all across the city, but you might be asking what parts of town are more at risk than others? Well, don't worry, we have a full map right now on KSAT.com. That map will show you all the hot spots for vehicle burglaries across San Antonio. If you plan on hitting the roads this weekend, Traffic Authority's RJ Marquez has the latest information on road closures. All right, we know a lot of people are excited about this weather that's going to be clearing out, so that's good news. But unfortunately, we are going to see some closures on the northwest side, and we're talking about the 1604 I-10 interchange. Let's take a look here. Again, both directions of I-10 are going to be shut down this weekend until 5 o'clock on Monday, so you're not going to be able to get onto I-10 from UTSA up to La Cantera Parkway. And how about 1604 traffic? You're not going to be able to get on from Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway on the 1604 side. Now we have some drone video that we shot a few weeks back when the weather was obviously a lot nicer out there and you could see that they are installing these massive beams. This is the ramp that is going from 1604 to I-10 West up to Bernie. So obviously this is going to take some time out there. We know it's definitely a headache, but there is progress being made on this expansion project. Let's come back out to maps. So again, we're going to have all this information on KSAT.com. Another major closure here lasting until Monday 5 a.m. And make sure you stay safe out there. Follow all those traffic directions and signs. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, RJ. Well, recent heavy rains in San Antonio, it's actually washed out tons of trash from the city's storm drain system to the San Antonio River near the Espada Dam. Now you can actually see bits and pieces of styrofoam, toys, tires, lots of plastic bags along the river. One nonprofit, River Aid San Antonio, they lead groups of volunteers through the year to clean out the waterways, including one cleanup that happened that is happening today. Charles Blank with the nonprofit says everyone in our community can do their part. Keep the trash out of our river. You will never flick a cigarette in the street again. You will think twice about grabbing that plastic bag from HEB. Behaviors uh, change once you really see how bad this problem can get. So if you are interested in helping out, the cleanup goes from 10 a.m. today until 1 p.m. Organizers say bring a reusable water bottle and closed toe shoes. And another cleanup happening next Saturday as well. We have all that information. Hey, you can get a part of this. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 641, 51 degrees. Max, it's officially tax season. Woo. Starting on Monday, be aware of scammers. After the break, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz explains what to look out for so you can file with a peace of mind.
And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we have had a roller coaster of weather these last couple weeks. Sarah Spivey is back. She's going to have what you need to know when we come back. Janice Perriman has already gathered her bank statements and W-2s. She knows crooks are calculating, too. I'm really uh, mindful of, you know, fake people, you know, so no, I don't. Usually I try to call or, you know, find yeah, out something. Fine. I don't react on it right away. Tax season scammers, impersonators play on emotions like fear. Listen to this voicemail. The reason of this call is to inform you that IRS is filing lawsuit against you. Now the feds are warning about the latest scam, and this one isn't threatening, but it's showing up in text messages and in your inbox. Take a look. The logo looks real. The email says you overpaid your 2023 taxes and you're due a refund of $650. What you need to do is click this link. They're either trying to steal your money or steal your personal information. IRS spokesman Richard Sanford says clicking on the link may infect your computer with malware. He wants people to know this. One thing that we don't do at the IRS is send emails unsolicited. The IRS first reaches out by U.S. mail and never makes threats or asks for sensitive data. In 2022, $5.7 billion was lost to tax scams and fraud, often through phishing, hacking, or fake tax preparers. Let's face it, these folks are going to have your social security number, your children's social security numbers. They're going to have all of this information. So you, these really need to be people that you can trust. You may not be able to avoid taxes, but you can steer clear of the scams. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It is crazy out there, all the scams and it's how terrifying. easy it is to fall prey to them. I get texts. Oh. I get texts too. Oh, you get texts. I got an equ equ Equifax. Yeah. Being like, if you don't click, like, your credit score has been compromised. If you yeah. don't click this link, it's gone down by 50. I'm Just like, I'm not clicking click. anything. Just don't never click. know. <laughs> That's, that's what I've learned. Just don't do it. Now, we have seen a lot of rain this month. In fact, we've seen almost seven inches of rainfall for the month of January. And the last six days, we've seen at least a little bit of rain at the airport every single day. Today, however, we will not see any rain. It is going to be a fairly sunny and dry weekend and a dry end to January 2024. But what an amazing month. Our second rainiest January ever on record in San Antonio and records date back to the 1880s. Take a look at those rain chances. Again, no major rain chances for us as we close out uh, January. January ends on Wednesday. And then even as we start February, there's only isolated rain in the forecast, particularly by Saturday. Uh, 20 to 30 percent chance for isolated rain Thursday through Saturday. We'll keep you posted about that rain chance, but I don't know. Enjoy the days here where it's just going to be nice and comfortable outside. Speaking of nice, take a look Look out there, a beautiful sunrise as we have a mix of clear skies and some clouds. It's chilly, it's 52, and the winds are picking up. Winds are sustained from the northwest at 17 miles per hour. We're seeing a few gusts already of up to 25 miles per hour in San Antonio, even a wind gust close to 30 miles per hour up at Los Maples. And so throughout the morning today, we are going to see gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. That's in the forecast for us. So keep in mind, that's about the only thing that will be a bit of a nuisance today are the gusty winds up to 25 to 30 miles per hour through the lunch hour into the afternoon. But by the evening, winds will calm. And so expect those calming winds later on tonight. Take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast dipping briefly into the 40s here the next couple of hours. It's going to be partly cloudy this morning as we start to see skies gradually clear 52 at 10 and windy around noon. It'll be 54 still pretty windy, but we'll see mostly sunny skies skies this afternoon and a high right near 60 degrees in San Antonio. Elsewhere, we'll be looking at a high of 66 in Del Rio, 59 in Rock Springs, 61 in Canyon Lake, 66 in Pleasanton, 62 in Gonzales, 61 in Hondo and 60 in Kerrville, slightly cooler than the average. Here's a look at the weather setup across the state of Texas. 
drying out for most of us as this low pressure system with this cool front is moving across the Gulf Coast states. This will create a risk for some severe weather, mainly from New Orleans out into the panhandle of Florida. This is the big system for the nation today. Instead, what we're going to see here in Texas is high pressure moving in, taking hold. So that will result in several nice days here. Here's a look at the forecast over the next few days. By tomorrow morning, 39, so a chilly start to your Sunday, but beautiful in the afternoon in 64. Another cold start as we start the work week Monday, 39 degrees Monday morning, but 66 for the high. A few more clouds Tuesday and Wednesday with comfortable temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. Then by Thursday and Friday, we start to introduce a small chance for rain, but a much different looking forecast this week, much drier than the last week. And again, temperatures going to be cold in the morning, comfortable in the afternoon. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now is just about 6.51. 51 degrees. Coming up, the latest discovery from NASA on an exoplanet 97 Whoa. light years from Earth. Why they say this is a landmark one. Good morning and welcome back. We love space news here on GMSA at 6 a.m. NASA says they have found water on an exoplanet 97 light years from Earth. And astronomers, well, they use the Hubble Space Telescope to detect water molecule, molecules in a small, blazing hot planet's atmosphere. It is roughly twice Earth's diameter, but still the smallest exoplanet found to have water vapor in its atmosphere. Okay. So temperatures there reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, making it very unlikely any kind of life actually exists there. Here's the reason why it's a story. First off, very cool to talk about. Secondly, researchers say this is a landmark discovery as it gets them closer to understanding worlds that have characteristics similar to Earth, such as the presence of water. Okay, speaking of NASA, NASA's little helicopter that could Aww. no longer can, Max, uh, after taking a hit on its most recent flight. The Ingenuity Chopper has been on Mars for three years. However, NASA says the chopper suffered rotor blade damage. It'll be left behind while the rover moves along. Poor little guy. And if you're an astrology fan, you can take a breath of sigh of relief now. That is until the next Mercury in retro retrograde oh. will happen three more times this year. Some people believe that when Mercury is in retrograde, it can cause confusions and delays and right. motions. Yeah, it is what it is. So during <laughs> retrograde, the planet closest to the sun appears to travel backwards across the sky, but it is just an illusion. Mercury retrograde will happen again from April 1st through April 24th, and then August 5th through the 27th, and then November 25th through December 15th. So we are just preparing you now. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, you know, that's why everything's been so wonky. Mercury was just in retrograde. Is that why, Max? That's 100% why. Okay. Gotta be it. <laughs> Time now, 655, 51 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. And good morning to you on this Sunday. Coming up here on GMA, stunning verdict. Former President Trump's reaction after a jury ordered him to pay $83.3 million to E. Jean Carroll for defamation. Plus, widespread weather watches in effect, the latest on the weekend storm sweeping the Deep South to the Northeast. And more on the floods, fog, and record spring-like temperatures. Our weather team has it all, of course. And in the skies, the Boeing MAX 9 takes flight after that door plug incident on an Alaskan Airlines flight grounded some maxes three weeks ago. And on the seas, crews come back. The world's largest cruise ship set to sail later today. We're going to tell you about the cruise lines making waves right now. That is all ahead right here on GMA. We'll see you soon. All right, beautiful sunrise out there right now. We do have a layer of clouds moving in, but this will be temporary. We're going to have plenty of sunshine today. It's 53 degrees, but take a look at those winds. Winds from the northwest sustained at 15, but gusting up to near 30 miles per hour. That's going to be the case today. Windy all day, 60 for the high. A cold morning tomorrow at 39, but a comfortable afternoon at 64. Bit of a dry stretch here. No real rain chances until the latter half of next week, when only then we'll see isolated rain. Cool mornings, comfortable afternoon afternoons and nice into January. Beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but don't go anywhere. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Y'all at 8.